Brilliant. Well, good evening, everybody. And today is Tuesday, the 27th of April, and we are on the John Lavenia Success Mastermind. My name is Evie Barnabas, and it's good to have Madam Chop Chop on with us with her brilliant news, Gail, Mark, John Apogee, Adrian Jackson, Jane, Daisy, Edward, Julia, ooh, the magnet himself is on, John Lavenia, Cyril, Evelyn S, Linda, Coral, Janet M, Carl and Lynn. Welcome everybody. And I'm sure we'll have a few more people join us. Um, what was coming up for me for today was new beginnings. And, you know, sometimes we're terrified when something ends um, because we don't know what's to come. Um, we don't, we're probably not ready to let go of what we had before. Sometimes it's because, you know, they're keepsakes, you know, they, they have a lot of sentimental value or they're valuable items, or we think that's probably the best, you know, that we can get. But every now and again, something ends or we lose something or something dies or a chapter closes or a door shuts. And, you know, that signifies not just the end of something, but the beginning of something else. And so today I wanna to talk about new beginnings because I always, I, in my head, I think if you want something different, so you want something new, you gotta let go of the old or you gotta make room for the new, right? So I'm gonna give you a really flimsy example. You all know my love for shoes, right? I have made a deal with myself that if I ever find a pair of shoes that I think are absolutely irresistible and I need to have them, I want them, I love them, blah, 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 I need to get rid of two or three pairs that I currently have. Now that sets the bar really high because as far as I'm concerned, there's no more room for shoes. I mean, unless I want to sleep on the edge of the bed and let the rest of the house be occupied by shoes, it's ridiculous, right? So in my head, I'm saying to myself, if I want any new additions, I've got to make room for them, which means some that I have that I know I like and love will have to go, right? So that's a really flimsy example. But getting serious for a moment, I think of a farmer, right? He's got seed in his hand. Now he can decide to mill that seed, get it into flower form and do whatever he wants with it, right? He can sell the seed or with the flower, he can make a cake or he can make cornmeal, whatever it is he wants to use that flower for, right? And he can have that last meal and that's it. And that means his piece of parcel of land is gonna just stand there the whole year because he's not going to grow anything, right? Or he can take that seed he has and put it in the ground and actually watch it grow, right? But either way, he's going to lose that seed. To get something else, that seed in that current form has to go away to make room for the new, for the different, for the fresh, right? And there's usually a time lapse, a time lapse, a time lag, right? between giving up the seed, giving up the old, and actually getting the new. It takes a while for the stuff to transform, to materialize, to show up, right? But the new beginnings should be an exciting period because we don't know, yes, we don't know what's to come, but that whole feeling of freshness, newness, and adventure, right? should get us all happy because it gives us one, a chance to rewrite the story. Um, thanks to Bill, uh, Bill McDonald, I don't know if he's on today. He posted something the other day and he said, don't be afraid to start all over. You may like your new story better. I really believe that. Sometimes that opportunity to reinvent ourselves means that a different version, a better version, an improved version can be what shows up in the next chapter. So new beginnings are not always or shouldn't always be taken with a negative view. As far as I'm concerned, it could be the chance to make a spectacle of yourself, right? It could be a chance to raise the bar. It could be a chance to set new standards. It could be a chance to actually push yourself to go further, right? So I'm thinking new beginnings. How do we do this? For a lot of us from last year to this year, and even when we got together on what was Blue Sky and the Daily Success Calls and what morphed into JLSM, which is where we are now, new beginnings. We were all obviously searching for something. We wanted to change what was into what could be, right? And for some of us, we gave up something dear. 
right? Whether it was capital, whether it was time, whether it was a job we walked away from. I mean, for some of us, it's been people we knew because exposure to this platform, we're now thinking and operating on such a high frequency that if I actually took a poll now and said, how many people still have the very same group of friends they had when they joined Daily Success Calls or JLSM as they have today? For some of you, you might still have a few of those, but I will want to guess that you've probably added a few more that were not on your list of friends this time last year, right? That's because you're moving, you're shifting, right? You're operating on a higher plane. So the higher you go, the different kind of minds you're gonna be attracting to yourself. For some of us, we've had to let go of, you know, people that we knew a year ago. Because remember when we said, you know, I think Glenn did a session like this. I've done a session like this where how badly do you want what you want? What are you prepared to let go of? Who are you prepared to let go of to get what it is you want or to get to where you want to be, right? So think about new beginnings as restart, fresh start. John likes to say reset button, right? Every day that we wake up, as Mark would say, on this side of the permafrost, is a day to reset that button. It's a day to start over. It's a day to rewrite, right, the story. It's a day for a fresh beginning. It's a, you know, it's, it's a chance to start all over. So think of, this is another quote I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, share with all of us today. Somebody said that, um, let me just go to it so I say it right. Don't, don't ruin a good today by thinking about a bad yesterday let it go, right? Don't ruin a good today by thinking about a bad yesterday, let it go. So I don't know what was, the only thing you should be taking from what was is whatever learnings, right? That are gonna serve you on your way to where you're going or the people that are still gonna be operating on a frequency that you can bear knowing that you are higher now, I mean, you're shifting, you're moving planes, right? So only take the people that are gonna serve you, only take the learnings that are gonna serve you. Don't spend time, don't camp in that yesterday if that yesterday was terribly negative. It will not serve you today, right? And then somebody else said, I think a couple of days ago on a call I was on, they said, think about it this way. Today is tomorrow's history. Today is tomorrow's history. So you decide what kind of history you're going to have. Because yesterday is gone, right? Today is a brand new day. Tomorrow is yet to be. But by the time you get to tomorrow, today is history. So what you do today is going to be part of your history tomorrow. So what do you want that history to say? What do you want that history to be? Are you going to dwell in that bad yesterday that isn't going to serve you, but is going to keep you in that rut? Or are you going to say, you know what? Today is a brand new day, an opportunity to reset, opportunity to restart, opportunity to refresh, right? And I'm going to do it all over. I might need to tweak a few things. I might need to change strategy. I might need to change focus. I might need to dial into a few more calls. I might need to speak to a few more people, whatever it is decide that every time you have an opportunity to rewrite the story, to improve, to make amends, to change course, whatever it is, that you will take it and not keep looking back. There's a reason why on our, in our cars, the windscreen is as big as it is and the rear view mirror is only like so. We're not meant to be going like that and think we're driving, no. We're meant to be facing the direction in which we're going. So new beginnings, looking forward to what it is we're expecting, focusing on what we want our reality to be, not dwelling on what has been, not beating ourselves up about what has been, but to be excited of what is and what could be, because today is tomorrow's history. So new beginnings, when I think of new beginnings, um, you know, sometimes, like I said, we have to let things go. And it's not very easy to let things go because what you're saying is by letting that thing go, you're saying, I trust that what is coming is gonna be bigger, is gonna be better, 
is going to be more valuable, is going to serve me more than what I currently have. You don't have any proof of it, but you're believing against the odds that that's what's going to come your way. There is nobody in their right mind that will let go of what they have, expecting something worse than what they have, right? So when we let go of stuff, our minds should be on, you know what? I'm making room for the new. And the new is going to be bigger, it's going to be better, it's going to be more valuable than what I'm letting go of. So don't see it as a loss, but see it as making room for bigger, for better, for more valuable. See it as an opportunity for promotion. You're leaving a level, you're going up one higher. You're saying goodbye to an old version of you, maybe still had you know, quite a few things to work on, but you're heading towards a better version of you. New beginnings should always put good kind of butterflies in our stomachs. We should have that excited feeling. We should be looking forward to what is to be. We should be excited about what the future holds. We should be saying, oh my God, I wonder whether it's going to go that way or if it's going to go that way, right? We shouldn't be like, oh boy, okay, did I really make the right decision? Do I really want to do this? No. We should be all excited and getting ready to go. So for a lot of us, we're still at the beginning of our journeys, whether it's an e-commerce journey, whether it's a personal development journey, whether it's the financial management journey or the investment, whatever it is. For a lot of us, we're still not too far off from the starting blocks. And so see new beginnings as a time of excitement, a time of freshness, a time of new growth, and be excited about what can be. Don't dwell on what has been, especially if it was, you know, if you left, left a bad taste in your mouth or it wasn't what you wanted, no, 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 no. Let it go. Don't, don't bother ruining today by that yesterday that just wasn't all that, right? So new beginnings, I'm thinking, what can we say today? What can we write down? What can we dwell on and say, you know what? For a new beginning, this is what I choose to focus on, right? A new beginning is an opportunity to reinvent yourself. You know, I, and right now, as I say this, I think of um, Edward from Bradford, and he, I don't know if he's on the call, but he's one guy who, oh my goodness, the number of times he's reinvented himself career-wise. I mean, I, I don't think there's any role that man hasn't done. He's been a project manager. He's been a business analyst. He's been an accountant. He's been a plumber. He's been a joiner, carpenter, carpenter. He's, he's been a, um, a builder. I mean, he's done stuff, right? And he just keeps reinventing himself. He finds an opportunity, he goes, you know what, COVID or no COVID, that's the next thing that's going to boom, I'm in there. He goes and does the training and keeps reinventing himself. So as a result, nobody can ever count him out. He's always in the game. He always finds a way to be present, to be useful, to be usable, right? To be of value to the marketplace because he keeps reinventing himself. And so for a lot of us, our e-commerce journeys, We've come up with products, services, other ideas on how we can add value in the marketplace. Because we've, we found a gap and we realize, you know what, people need this. And so we've gone on that journey and we're saying, you know what, I'm gonna do this the best I can. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be attentive to detail because I know if I get this right, not only will I get a customer one time, but I will get repeat business, right? So for a lot of us, new beginnings have given us a chance to say, say to ourselves and of ourselves, what else can I do? Whatever I was yesterday, there must be more to me than there was yesterday. For as long as I'm still here, there's still value that I can add. There's still something that I still have to do. I still have a place to occupy. I still have an impact to make, right? So for every day that we're here and we keep showing up, we should be asking ourselves, what is that thing I'm supposed to be starting? What is that additional value I'm supposed to bring to the conversation, to the party, to the platform, right? What is it that I need to do that's gonna make that new beginning refreshing, that's gonna make it a reality, that's gonna make it valuable, that's gonna make it better than what the yesterdays were? So new beginnings, we shouldn't be afraid of those. 
we should embark on those and see them as an exciting adventure because it gives us so many opportunities to rewrite the story. It doesn't matter what somebody said to you back in the day or what they called you five, 10 years ago. Who are you today? And I wanna guess that you're, still, you're not that same version that you were five years ago or 10 years ago. I wanna believe that this is an improved, bigger, better, more present version of whoever you are on this platform today. So every time we lose something or something dies or something comes to an end or a door closes, sometimes a door slams in our faces, uh, a chapter ends, let's see. Before we turn that page over, let's be expectant. Let's say, you know what? It's a new beginning. It's an opportunity to be daring. It's an opportunity to try. It's an opportunity to put myself out there. It's an opportunity to make a mark. You know, what I couldn't do yesterday, maybe I can do today. For, you know, for, for a few people, you know, they start diets and they kind of like go, oh my goodness, I forgot I was on a diet. I had a slice of cake. You know what? Okay, fine. You had a slice of cake. Reset. Start again, right? Just, just carry on. Yeah, boo boo. That's fine. You had the cake. You know, don't sweat it. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just a, a just man, right? Right? Gets up. He may fall seven times, but he gets back up again. So it doesn't matter. Okay, you didn't quite get it right, or you had that piece of cake, or you had that bar of chocolate. You know what? It's happened. It, it's not like you can bring the piece of cake back, right? It's not like you can bring the bar of chocolate back. Just say, you know what? Yeah, I messed up. That's it. That's in my yesterday. Reset. Let's carry on. Right? For a lot of us, okay, we kind of like say, I'm going to go to the gym today. Or I'm going to go to the gym every day. Or, I'm going to work out half an hour every day. Or, I'm going to go for a walk. Or I'm going to get however many steps in, right? And maybe yesterday you did a third of the number of steps you were going to do. Today is another day. Maybe go half of the number of steps or accomplish the full number of steps. Because you know what? Doing a third is better than doing zero. But whatever happens, don't say because you did a third, you're going to go back to zero. No. When I say reset, I don't mean go back to zero. I mean move forward. Push yourself to do that little bit much better, right? So if your first product on Amazon wasn't the great sale you thought it was going to be, right? Didn't captivate the audience's attention, right? That's fine. Don't beat yourself up over it. Just go do a bit more research, bring out the next one. Who's to say that that next product is not gonna be the winner that you're looking for or the third or the fourth, but see every opportunity to introduce something new into the marketplace as a new beginning, as exciting, as fresh, as an adventure. Don't let that failed instance, right? Or that mess up, right? derail you from the message that you are. Because every mess we make is part of our message, y'all. So you might think you're in a great big mess right now, but just think of how powerful your message will be when you get it right. It's going to be incredible because then you're going to say, people, I used to be like this, but check me out now. But whatever it is, that mess, don't let it get you back to zero where you then decide, you know what? I give up. I'm not going to do anything. No. Keep pressing on. So please, every day we start a new, a, a new day, see it as a brand new opportunity to go bigger, to do better, to have more, to be an improved version of yourself. New beginnings don't have to be scary. They don't have to be negative. And it's just so, you know, I, I, I was smiling as, you know, Madam Chop Chop is sharing her news, saying, you know, she's, she's starting this new role. And I'm excited. And I'm thinking, talk about a new beginning, right? And then she gave the details of the role. Oh, my goodness. The package is higher than what she was before the whole COVID impl implication. And they cut the salary and they did this. She's moving on to a new beginning that's bigger, that's better. A year after a pandemic, come on, right? Yeah, there, there'll be butterflies in her stomach. Yeah, she might be a bit nervous. Oh my goodness, you know, it's a new organization. I had to, but guess what? It's exciting. It's new people. She's going to be exposed to new ideas, a new culture. It's going to be another opportunity for her to leave her mark 
I mean, we all know Madam Chop Chop, right? She's on it. That's going to be another environment for her to go and actually shine and make a positive impact on other people in her immediate community. That's going to be another opportunity to, for, for her to have influence, right, with people. I mean, the opportunity is just endless. So I'm like, wow, talk about a new beginning. So this stuff works. I mean, we're all in a higher frequency. We are operating not where we were last year. So I'm not surprised that Madam Chop Chop is going into a new environment at a higher level. This is what we should be expecting. From the exposure we're getting from this platform, new beginnings should be taking us higher, not backwards. New beginnings should be exciting adventures to come. I think of Jane as I say this, you know, she shared with us that she got asked to apply for a role that's higher than anything she's ever done. I wasn't surprised. We can't all be here rubbing minds and not think that there isn't gonna be a positive impact from doing this. We should be bigger and better and more valuable to the marketplace. And so this is what should happen. It shouldn't be a surprise when it happens. That should be our expectation that from doing what we're doing here, the results are going to be positive in our favor, that we're gonna get multiple opportunities to make spectacles of ourselves. I mean, like John says, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. But if you're getting better and better, then you should get higher, right? You should get more, you should be more successful. So new beginnings should come and they should be exciting. There should be something we should embrace with all that we have and say, wow, how amazing. Because all of this we're doing here, that's what is prepping us for, for those fresh starts, for those do-overs, for those reset situations, right? So from today, if something ends or we lose something or somebody dies or something dies or a chapter closes, let's look forward to the new beginnings. Let's muster up that positive energy. Let's expect bigger and better things. Let's know that the tomorrow is gonna to be brighter than today, simply because it's a new beginning. It might be the end of something, but just like the tide goes out and it comes back in, when something dies, something else comes to life. It's just a natural law. Something closes, something's gonna open, right? something ends, something else is going to start. That is just the cycle and the circle of life, right? So when we lose stuff or we have to let go of stuff, let's focus on the flip side of that and say, you know what? That positive element of this needs to be to balance it out. And so I am expectant as to what is coming. For new beginnings, oh, I'm excited. I'm like, bring it on because new beginnings, they're just fresh, they're wonderful. And if you, as long as you let go of the baggage that was you know, way back when and you leave it where it is, you can, you can fly, you're light, you can, you can savor the moment, you can enjoy the new experience because you haven't got anything weighing you down. You can be, you can be the fullness of yourself and enjoy every moment of the new beginning. I mean, can you imagine going into a relationship with baggage from the last one? You're gonna be treating the new person as though they were the ones that caused all the issues in the old relationship because you brought the baggage in, right? And you're already dooming the new thing before you even give her a chance to blossom. So yeah, let, let's not even do that. Let's leave, yeah, the old stuff where it belongs, shut the door on it, go into the new, no baggage, baggage free, free as a you know, bird, let's just fly. Let's enjoy the experience. Let's savor the moment, you know, and let's be excited for the adventure that it is. So I just want to say to everybody, when something ends, when we lose something, when a door slams in our face, let's be expectant for the flip side that has to happen because that is the way the laws of the universe work. There can't be any closing without an opening. There can't be something dying without something else coming to life. There has to be that balance. Otherwise, everything is just going to fall apart, right? And I mean, for as long as we've been, it hasn't, right? Okay, fine, I know we're talking about climate change or whatever, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. The tide still goes out, it still comes in. It might not go as far or you know, come in as close, but you know, the ebb and flow is still there. There are just certain laws that can't be broken. 
So new beginnings, let's be expectant. And let's say to ourselves, what is it that I can do to give this new beginning every chance it needs to be successful? What can I do to be bigger, better, more valuable in the marketplace? It doesn't matter where you are in your journey. It doesn't matter what didn't work yesterday. We're talking about today. And every day that you are given the chance to start, think about it as a fresh start, a do-over, a reset opportunity. And say to yourself, what can I do today to make this new beginning the best that it can possibly be? And that's what was coming up for me um, today. So I'm going to open it up and I would love to hear your views on the subject. If you think I have talked a lot of rubbish and new beginnings are still frighteningly scary and you don't want to do them, let me know. And yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> EVA, I guess I'm going to talk yeah. since you talked Yay. about it. Thanks, Madam Chop Chop. <laughs> you are 100% as usual. Um, new beginnings are phenomenal, but also very scary. If you're human, you're going to be a little bit with the butterflies of, oh my gosh, you know, I've been used to this routine of being from home, running my business, working for this other company, but it was not really working out, you know, and then we part ways on April the 2nd, and I got an offer last Friday from this company that is exactly aligned with the way that I think and feel the way it should be for someone that I will work for. I mean, it was to the T, everything checked off on how they are. To the point I didn't even ask about benefits, how I didn't care. I'm covered, you know, through my husband. So it, it was not important. And then I started looking, I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't ask about pay time off, vacation, don't matter, you know, but it was just the perfect thing. And not only that, they moved fast. We had four interviews in one week back to back and lunch finally to meet the team. So, you know, it's been very interesting. And in my world, you know, as you all may know, an interview takes a long time. It could be a month before you're through the entire process, sometimes up to three months, depending on the company. And when things are meant to be and everything is lined up, you know, it's just going to happen. So um, everything that you're saying is so spot on, you know, new beginnings. When one door closed, that's what I said, you know, even though I knew I didn't want to work for them anymore, even though I knew it was coming because I really was calling it, that, you know, but I didn't want to be the one that resigned. You know, it had to be, you know, mutual consent. Um, it still gave me the butterflies in my stomach. I was still nervous. I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do? You know, you go from having something to having absolutely zero additional income. And then, boom, it just happened right on target. I got two job offers actually last week. <laughs> and I declined one, you know, <laughs> and yet I still have the door open with them as well because of how it was handled. So um, my point to, to what you're saying is even though we may be scared of taking steps to something new because the unknown is always gonna be scary to all of us, take a chance, take a chance on yourself. We all have grown so much with this group, you know, and we should just give ourselves a chance whether that is a new business whether it is a new career, a new love in your life, a new relationship, just open yourself, open your heart and let the blessings come in. That was it. Oh, thank you so much, Madam Chop Chop. Um, you know, and, and I, I love that. Um, you know, somebody once said the courage is not acting in the absence of fear or, you know, acting like you're no longer afraid, but it's actually acting because you're afraid that that's what courage is, right? So it's acting in spite of the fear, in spite of being scary or scared about that opportunity and that new beginning. That's what courage is, right? And I wanna say for all of us on this platform, if there's one dose that we've got is courage. I mean, we show up in the marketplace every day, somehow or the other, but you know what? We're still doing it. Whatever it is we decided to do, 
I mean, however complicated Amazon has thrown spanner in the works and something new comes out and, you know, just when we think we've got it all figured out, there's another thing we've got to learn and something else we have to pay for and another form you have to fill. People are still doing it, right? So I think we are seriously courageous on this platform. It's not that all those scary things have gone away. No, they're still there. If anything, they're multiplying, right? But we're still pressing on. We're still moving ahead. We're still taking a chance on ourselves. So thank you so much, Evelyn M, for reminding us about that. Um, and yeah, I couldn't say it better. Let's take a chance on ourselves because if you give up on you, why should anybody else be in your corner? Is a question I have to ask, yeah. So I don't see any other hands up. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else wants to chime in. Linda, yes, please. I think you're muted, Linda. We can't hear you. Linda? The, the, uh, <laughs> I had to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ivy. Thank Absolutely. you very much um, for this session today. And Evelyn, um, and all of you guys, because I mean, uh, it comes down to decision, doesn't it? And uh, I've been struggling with a lot of decisions and uh, I actually made some last week. So, and one of them is to sell my family home. Um, which is, I don't know where this is coming from. I didn't expect this. Hang on. <clears throat> but anyways, yes, new beginnings. Um, and uh, you know, it's gonna really help me out to create the new beginnings for me. So just, uh, you're just giving me um, validation today. So thanks for that. You are welcome, Linda, anytime. And you know, I, I, I know what it is. I've just moved house myself. Um, and I'm sure you can talk to Glenn as well. Um, his wife and himself have just, you know, sold one house, bought another. It is a big thing. It's a big decision. But you know what? I don't know anybody on this platform who has done that recently that has regretted that. I, I know that Glenn is so happy. Um, his wife is also very happy in their new digs. I am. I mean, I've shown you guys pictures of where I am. So I really believe that if this is what your gut and your spirit and the universe is telling you to do, trust it, that it is the best decision for you. Um, and you know what? It's a chance to rewrite the story. It's a chance to start afresh. It's a chance to, I love decorating. Can you imagine? You can have a completely new color scheme in the new place, right? You can have, if you want to, new furniture, right? Um, you know, it's, it's an opportunity to like, get rid of stuff. Like, do you really want to hold on to everything? Like, you know, what are the treasured things you want to take into the new place? You know, it's probably, you know, we kind of like say we're doing a spring cleaning, but how many of us really get the chance to do a proper spring cleaning, right? So this is, yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking of all the exciting things, you know, that could be happening for you in the next few weeks, right? Um, so I'm really like, I'm chuffed for you. I'm cheering you on, Linda. Um, and if you need to, you know, chat to us, reach out to any of us, I'm sure anybody on this platform will be happy, you know, to, to cheer you up, to speak to you, to encourage you to just keep going. Um, you know, I wish I lived there. I'd come and help you box things up <laughs> and move because I know what that can be like. Um, having um, just myself but yeah, yeah it's, it's actually there. um yeah. i don't actually live there anymore um okay it's, yeah it's an investment property for me at this ah, point okay. it's, um okay. yeah it's time to let it go and uh i've been doing a lot of thinking on it and there's been a lot of uh visualization coming to um to tell me it's the right thing to do so and then hearing you today, it's like, yep, it's, it's right. It's right. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's going to allow me to do special things at my other house where I'm living. So, yeah. Yeah. So I have to have to visualize that, you know, the new bathrooms, the new laundry room. That kind oh, of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And so. if I'm going to say this, I'm, I don't think I'm out of place saying this. Linda, what's to say you're not going to get access to a better, bigger investment property in your future? Sure. Because I know you're a go-getter and I know you're going places. I know you're very business-minded and I know you are growing something phenomenal. 
so I can see a better investment property in your future. And then you will have the pick of, I mean, top choice. You would be spoiled for choice as to where it is you want that property to be. Mm -hmm. So you might be making room now for that future property, but I tell you what, I think you'll, you'll end up having another investment property somehow. I know it's going to happen. And you'll be <laughs> like, this is so much bigger and better and nicer than the one I let go of so many years ago. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I am glad to be part of this platform. So I, I'm watching because I'm, I'm going to see this unfold. <laughs> I'm excited. Thanks, for you. Well done. Yeah, thanks. Um, Jane, your hands up. Um, yeah, thank you, um, Yvie. New beginnings. Um, this is really resonating with me. Uh, at this time, I have been, um, I've recently got a new job and um, exciting. And um, I'm also doing my professional exam. However, I feel really rusty in the profession in which I am. And what I have done, or what I'm inquiring to do, is to um, apply to university to do that court again, as uh, just to get a fresher taste of it, rather than um, just being um, just to be up to date and current in terms of my profession, and without much stress, because because I I'm already in the industry and um, I. Um, 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 experience wise I'm, I'm very experienced however I think there's this thing in my mind that says oh um, you have not you're missing this and you're missing that and you're missing that and, and so I just I feel comfortable just going to take um, a, a fresher course in what I'm the field I am already and for me that's a new beginning and it's really exciting and that's all. And thank you. Fantastic. Um, thanks, Jane. You know, I every time I listen to you, um, I just I just see you blossoming. I mean, you are getting stronger every time you speak, um, and that is just evident. And this is the impact that this platform is having on you. Um, and I just want to remind you, you know what? Even the top um, people in any field never, ever, ever know it all, never. Top surgeons, whether they're cardiologists or neurosurgeons or you know, whatever, whatever field, lawyers, bankers, judges, there is nobody that knows 100% of all that they need to know. Because the rate at which technology is moving anyway, we can't keep up fast enough. That's just one thing, right? Every other day, things are being discovered and new knowledge is being published. But even if we're studying 50% of the day, there is no way we could be on top of all the new stuff coming out in any given field. So I will say to you, do that when that voice replays, right? And tells you, oh, uh, why do you think you're all that and a bag of chips when you don't have this, this, that? No. Tell it, thank you for sharing but I don't know anybody on this planet that knows 100% of everything in their field. And that's it. And carry on with your business. And the fact that you're wanting to do a refresher course, right, shows that you are a diligent, competent, committed person in your field. So that already sets you apart because very few people do continuous learning. They feel they've got the degree, they've got the professional exams, they stop. Unless the governing bodies make sure that they do certain number of points every year. Most people mm -hmm. don't do that. They don't carry on learning. So the fact that you have identified and you've signed up to do a refresher course in your chosen field already sets you apart from most people. So please, when that voice replays, politely tell it, thank you for sharing. I don't know anybody in any field that knows 100% of what they need to do to get their job done. And then carry on thank with your you. life. Don't let it be a stuck record that then replays and replays and then distracts you from the progress you're making because you are going places. The strength and how far you've come is evident every time you speak. So don't let anything steal that progress from you. Nothing. Just keep on doing what you're doing. And when that voice replays, you, you to, yeah, please keep quiet. I didn't ask for your opinion and carry on. Yeah. So, but well done. Well done.
Um, I think you're going to surprise yourself more than anything else. <laughs> Mandy, you've got your hand up. Hi, Evie. Hi, yeah. Um, I've been listening to everybody. Yeah, it's a brilliant subject. It's so important for people. Um, I just wanted to say to um, Jane, congratulations on getting a new job. I think that's brilliant. Um, and I think you're being really brave to go back to university for taking that decision. So, you know, you're doing it in spite of the fear. And I think that's brilliant. So well done for doing that. Um, I think that what I've seen with the past, the only difference I would say is that any time you lose something, you're going to feel grief over it. Whether it's obviously if it's a person or a pet or something, you're going to feel more grief. But I think you still need to allow yourself to feel that grief or the sadness um, but it's not allowing that to consume you forever and to think about it all the time. So, for example, Linda, with your house, you're going to feel really sad if it was a family home. There's going to be some lovely memories there um, of when you were younger. And I think it's it's allowing yourself to have those feelings and maybe going there when you go to make sure you go there before it's sold, etc. to just walk around it, to feel those feelings again, to allow yourself to be sad and then once you've done that, that's when you move on. That's when you say, right, I've done that now. It's time to move on um, and to know that you made the right decision. You don't know what's going to be in the future, but I do honestly believe that everything happens for a reason. Um, I think that we are where we are or what happens to us is there to teach us a lesson of some sort. But you may not know what that lesson is until a long way into the future, but it's moving towards you being better somewhere down the line. Um, and as I say, you might not know until further down the line. So I, there's something that's recently come to me and it's like, oh, that's why I had it. So I went to another job. I was only there for a couple of years. I got maybe done, et cetera. And that's why, how I came here. But there's another reason for that, because I learned things there that I might now be able to take forward in my business, which I didn't know at the time. Um, and it's like, oh, OK. And at that point, when I left that job, even though the way it happened, I was really sad. Um, and some other things have happened this year, but you do it and then you say, right, OK, now I've got to pull myself up, pull myself up, dust myself down, look forward to the future. And you say, don't worry about the future because you don't know what's there. You can't you can only deal with right now because right now is here. The past is gone. You cannot change it. You might be able to make things better if it's an argument with somebody, but you can't necessarily change it. And in the future, you don't know what's going to happen because when you get to the future, you don't know what the situation is going to be at that point, three months down the line, four months down the line, 12 months down the line, because you're not there yet. So you don't know what the situation is going to be. There could be other things that are happening for you at that time. Other opportunities will have come up. And until you get there, there's no point in making any considerations because you're not there yet and you haven't got all the facts. So deal with what you've got today. And then, as you say, look forward to the future. Yes, the butterflies are there, but do it in spite of the fear and allow yourself to become the best that you can become and don't allow the fear to stop you. And I think, yeah, I think I think you're dead on. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I had something which says our past does not define our future. And I like that one as well. So your past does not define your future. You know, whatever happened then, you can be new now, new beginning, start something else. So yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Mandy. I mean, I agree that you know when we when we lose something, uh, death of a pet or a loved one, we should mourn that. And even even moving, I mean, when I moved you know, house, even with everything that it was, it was home for me for six years, right? And so, you know, it was the end of something. So I gave myself to think about that and took the learning out of that and what would I do differently and all. So that, you know, there's a process in time. But what, what I will caution is that we don't camp um, at that spot. So rather than have a tent, we then build a whole mausoleum, you know, in, mem yeah. in memory of, you know, the, the hurt and the death and the loss and, yeah. the, and then we just never move from there. That, that is not what I'm advocating. So by all means have a tent, camp for the weekend or whatever, process the feelings, you know, so you're not taking the baggage or the hurt or the, you know, feelings unresolved from that experience into the newness that you're going into. And that was why I mentioned, can you imagine going into a new relationship with the baggage from the old one? It's just going to destroy the new thing before it's given a chance to succeed, right? So by all means, absolutely process, mourn, and, and it's, it's actually healthy to let those emotions flow because it's a cleansing thing as well by going through that process um, and then frees you up to actually um, engage and, and, and observe and enjoy the new thing that's coming, right? So I completely agree with that, Mandy. Um, and it's true that, there, that, like I said, there's a time lag. So when the farmer sows the seed to when he gets the harvest, mm -hmm. there's a lot of time that passes, right? 
And sometimes, like you said, when stuff happens, we never know the fullness of why that thing has happened so further down the line. And so like you, the job you left just before COVID, you never really understood why it was you had it and why you had it for the length of time you had it. But now it's all unfolding. But can you imagine if you had been stuck in the mud and upset and miserable about that ending? You would still have been trapped yeah. there. I don't know that you would have done the blue sky thing or then have come on to daily success goals and then, or then have come on to JLSM. That, you could still have been in that rut, right? But because you processed, you were yeah. already on the lookout for something new. You knew you had the ability to do the blue mm. sky thing. You embarked on that. And look at how far you've come. So now, because you've gone through the process and you've let yourself observe and engage, you can now see the learnings of that job and mm. how they're working in your life, in your business today, which is you know over a year ago that that, that experience happened. So very, very, very yeah, true. Definitely. Thank you so much for sharing that. that that's amazing. Thank you. Um, Julia, you have your hand up. You're next. Yeah, I just uh, had a thought as Linda was talking about giving up her, uh, having to sell her family home. Um, and it also applies to Evelyn leaving her job and and, all, and leaving us, um, you know, not doing the uh, Amazon training anymore. When we move on to something new, somebody else moves on to what we had before quite often. That may not be always true, but Evelyn moved into a role that Stuart left, and now Neil and Jane are going to be moving into the role that Evelyn is leaving. Um, and the same thing for Linda, think about, you know, you have happy memories and it makes you sad to leave your family home. Perhaps another family is going to make those beautiful memories in that same place. And maybe that will give you some solace as you think about you know, ending your relationship with that property, but it gives someone else the opportunity to be blessed by that same home. So uh, just a little thought and y'all can take it or leave it. That, that is a fresh perspective, Julia. Thank you so much for that. Because, you know, a lot of times we focus on what's in it for me, but that, that is the flip side of, you know, try and think of how it could benefit somebody else, right? That could be somebody's dream, home, forever home. They may have been visualizing that and you're actually instrumental in making that come true for somebody else, right? So that's a great way to see that. Thank you so much, Julia, for sharing that. That was, that's really powerful. It just gives us another perspective. That's, that's amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I don't see any other hands up. Um, if you guys want me to give you back 12 minutes, I will do so with pleasure. Um, so... <laughs> I know John has to run because he starts the CEO challenge today with Shannon. Um, and there's an open invitation. If you all want to join that call, he says you are very welcome. Um, so thank you everyone for being on the general session with me today. Um, later on today, I believe there is no corporate careers. So um, nothing at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, but Wayne, is he on this week? I know he had a couple of weeks off. I don't have the calendar open, but I think he is on today. So 9 p.m. Eastern time, he is on, which is 2 a.m. UK time. Um, that is the case. Hey, Evie, and everyone. Brilliant. Evie, I yes, love John. you. You're awesome. You, what a great you're session. Awesome Thank too. you. I am, uh, I am uh, running around like a chicken without a head, but that's, that's good. I'd rather be busy than bored. Yes, Wayne's going to be on tonight. So everyone tune in. With Wayne at 9 p.m. Eastern, Metaphors for Success, the long-awaited return of Wayne. So yeah. Uh, yeah. thank you. And we're doing the CEO Freedom Challenge. Everyone should should have a seat there. And if not, go hit the, uh, I'm sure you got it in your inbox, your email. We've been sending emails like crazy. So love you guys. Love you, Evie. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. See you soon.